Hi folks, this is Sean McCormick. And this is kind of a preliminary, uh, I don't know, episode zero, I suppose, of season two. And um, where I do plan on getting back into doing stuff on the channel here. Um, I don't have my camera set up at the moment because I've actually been in the middle of updating my personal website. Uh, and which I'll be amalgamating the Lightroom blog blog into. But we're here to talk about Lightroom Classic 9.3. Now there are obviously updates to Camera Raw and to Lightroom as it is now called the, what was the cloud version. Um, but like I'm concentrating on Classic because that is what I use. So what do we have that's new? Well, we're looking here and if I just open up this here as well, it's going to be very obvious that there are some new things going on here as well. But let's talk about some cosmetic changes. So one of the first things you'll see here is that the tone curve is completely changed. So we now have the parametric curve, as we know before, to start here. And then we have the RGB curve and then the individual channels. And we can see that we have this beautiful change of color so that we know as we move towards one or the other, we get bluer this way and yellower in that way. This is stuff that I would generally have explained in text as or in video as I was, you know, showing what happens. Uh, that's on auto sync, shouldn't be on auto sync, but anyway. And um, so this is just a cosmetic change. Uh, now, you can, of course, copy channel settings as well. And you have snap to grid and stuff like that. But essentially, you're just basically getting a, a cosmetic redesign. And personally, I think it's all the better for it. It's it's lovely. The kind of big new feature, um, which I will show you with a completely different image. So you're gonna have to wait till I jump to that. So the next one we're gonna look at is, sorry, is in the brush. And what we have now is we have this new hue tool. So we have luminance and, and saturation already. Um, so like this is our saturation here and the luminance is basically the exposure. Um, so now we can, can change the hue. Now in HSL, um, you can change the overall hue in an image. Uh, and the problem with that is that it's actually fairly limited in how far you can go. Okay, with HSL, and so let me just do a quick bit of painting here with the brush. I'm actually doing it with this mouse, so it's not going to be as effective as I would like. So I'm just going to literally paint roughly kind of over the face here, and I'm just going to press O to see the mask. So what HSL allows you to do is gives you the full 360 degrees of color change, all right? So if you want to turn somebody into the Hulk or Gamora or whatever, just get to the top there, you can absolutely do that, okay? And, and then use fine adjustments. We can see here this is going from minus 180 to 180, but if we are in use fine adjustment, as we drag, it goes much slower, okay? So you can see that's going way, way slower. Now in this case here, what it allows us to do is we can make some minor skin tone changes. So if I turn that on and off, you can see the difference in the skin tone. And then what we can do is we come into a, like a color range mask, for example. And we can just say that we only want that to work on the skin. By pr I'm pressing O, hopefully we can see that we have limited that down um, to only what's happening with the skin. And of course, if we need to do stuff um, to get outside the area, we can as well. So that's the whole idea with that is that it, it allows you to limit it a little bit more. Now, there was one thing that I was trying to do with this and we can try do it here and it may not be effective. So if I click new and then let's say I grab um, this one here and let me double click to reset. So it's doing nothing and just do a quick drag down. No, that's not what I want to do. I actually want to drag it the whole way down. So that basically it's affecting the whole image essentially. And I'm going to press O to just hide what's going on here. So, so we can actually change the kind of the color. Well, I can turn off the fine adjustment because I actually want to make an extreme kind of color change. And now what I want to do is, let's say I come into color again, and I'm just saying that I really just want this to affect the kind of leaf color a little bit more. Right, so I can kind of jump around here a little bit. Now, what I found is that it doesn't allow me to quite do as much as I want. So it's not as... Uh, you know, you can't just do like one color and fix one color because you can see this is still affecting the skin. Some of that is because the actual green and holding the shift key as well to try and add to it, but it doesn't quite do what I want it to do. So it's not quite as powerful as, as you could imagine it to be. But however, it is still usable for stuff like what we were seeing there a few minutes ago with the skin. So let me just press the H key for a second. And let me just delete that then. So that's gone. And then we can jump back 
to our brush um, and so we can just see what's going on with the skin so if we turn on and off that with the skin so we can see that it's very 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 usable for that now there is a, a link um, that, like you can get to from the main blog which talks about uh, Greg Zulke who's actually the camera raw engineer who was working on this now this has just started but this doesn't mean that there's no opportunity for this to be expanded further because right now it's kind of a little bit limited because you have to use the range mask with it but it would be great to have something that's a little bit tighter like you can get in the individual channels for extreme color changes like you can with the hue saturation adjustment layer for example uh, other things that are going on as well is that if we come over here we can see that there are now different adobe defaults here okay so you've got color plus lens with noise reduction and stuff like that okay so this should allow you different options as well. There's now a thing as well with uh, presets. So if I go um, new preset, we have this uh, ISO settings, so we can create an ISO adaptive preset. So with this, what you do is you select a couple of images that have a range of ISOs. So if we actually can take more, learn more, and if I just drag this across here, so it brings up this page here, and you can see create an you know just says two or more images with different ISOs and make your changes, save them. And what it does is, uh, if we jump down here, basically when you have it, it will work out what you need to have between them, you know? So that's, that's basically it. So you could have something with a low ISO and a high ISO and then it'll work on your settings. So you have more extreme settings at the high ISO and stuff like that. Okay, so that is just you know, it's just something that's useful so that if you're doing something you're inside and outside it would be really helpful for, for wedding photographers basically uh, if you look up here and we, we just click here we see that sync has vanished from here because sync is now over here okay and it's now telling me that sync is paused and so I click start syncing and it will start syncing and we see that sync on is just there at the moment um, now, the reason why sync, sync has actually been on the whole time, the reason why sync is off is because I've had to do a reinstall of stuff here. And that is just to make sure that we got stuff running for you so that I could make this video. Now, of course, what's been happening a lot with current releases of Lightroom is that there's been a lot of work done in the background so that you're focusing on performance and stuff like that. So the whole idea as well is that when we're making adjustments here with sliders and stuff like that, it should feel smoother. And you can see that that's actually pretty smooth. And if you go back to the, the grid, um, as, we're, like, as we're scrolling in the grid, it's, it's actually pretty smooth. So we can actually see here, this stuff is all kind of, you know, everything's there. Now, obviously these are just coming in, but the idea is that when you scroll that you're not seeing um, gray squares basically anymore. And the other thing as well that's going on is for, uh, like the numbers and stuff there's a bit of caching going on in folders but that's now true of collections as well uh, one other thing that i should say as well is that uh, the facebook uh, publish plugin is gone and stuff will be transferred into their own collections that are separate so that that's that's just one of the things to highlight and for me that was a bit of an issue because every time i would reopen lightroom it would convert another folder so i was seeing that dialogue repeatedly which just got a little bit annoying and um, so video support wise um, HEVC is now supported on Windows with AVI is supported on Mac OS again and there are also a bunch of tutorials and um, that if you're on for the first time I believe it's these Lightroom tips so these come up here and these give you a little bit of information and um, and these will be added to in time so there will be more of these uh, as you go and, and the idea is just it's just to give you a little bit of help and um, if you're opening Lightroom for the first time you will see them straight away or if you reset your preferences you should see them as well and um, i have a little bit of a crop done here so if i press or for the crop tool and um, we're seeing our normal crop here and if we go o we will cycle through the crops and you will see this new one, okay, which allows you to know exactly where the center of the image is. I like this, but I wish there was a standard cross. I've tried doing shift O to see if it would, it would cycle, but I'd really like to see one that goes across, you know, that way as well. So it's not just an X, but more of a plus. Um, I'd like to see that. That would be really, really good. Um, I wonder if I can force a back up here now. Um, 
catalog settings and back up uh, when Lightroom next exits. So I'll have to change it after. I'm going to use my LR relaunch here. All right, so uh, see here. So it's telling me that the previous selected backup folder is not available and catalog folder will be used for backup. Uh, and it gives you the new location, right? So this was the drive that I had been using. This drive is actually turned off at the moment. So that is why it is telling me that I can't do it. So, um, so basically that's just what it's telling you. And that happens to be where my catalog is it's on another external drive. Okay. Um, so I'm just going to go uh, skip this time. And that will just close Lightroom down, obviously. Um, and you're going to get to see my lovely background now. So there's all the usual camera support and all of that kind of stuff. So those are kind of like the big things. There are a bunch of um, a bunch of changes. I mean, there's an icon change. And one thing that I should really highlight is that if you're on Windows 7, it is time to go to Windows 10 because video support uh, is gone from Windows 7 now. And so uh, that's effectively been gone from the start of this year. So really, it is time to make those updates anyway. So folks, like I say, this is kind of a preliminary season two start, like an episode zero, as you will. I will be back with... Uh, camera and all that kind of stuff back the way it normally is with all of the blurb and uh, I don't know what we call it intro reel all of that kind of stuff but I will do a tighter intro reel coming up soon uh, I am kind of very excited about uh, the new hue because it's definitely great for skin stuff and that is where I will most likely be using it in fact I think it may be time to do a dedicated video for what you can do with portrait retouching inside the Lightroom um, so that you can do that stuff without going to Photoshop. I mean, I still prefer going to Photoshop with it, um, but that's it. Now, obviously, there's tons of bug fixes. There's new lens editions, all that kind of stuff, but you can find them on the Adobe blog. So, folks, if you found this helpful at all, do give it a like and subscribe to the channel. And if you really want to know when new stuff is coming up online, because like I said, season two, hit that notification bell. So thank you for watching.